So here we are at our Premier League round table. This is Adam Leventhal. Um, and we are just taking the opportunity in this international break with the season just under a third way through. We have had 12 games of the season. There are 38 games in the season. So we are indeed just uh, under a third of the way through. Uh, my guests for this are Nick Miller. How are you, Nick? Hi, As he babe. sips a coffee in front of me. It's a cup of tea. It's a very strong cup of tea. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. You're pretty set. Good. Yeah, You're ready to assess. Yeah, I think so. Feel you know, it's uh, enough has happened that we can draw some hasty conclusions. I think. <laughs> so good. let's do it. Enough has happened. That's mm. the that should be the tagline of this episode. Enough has happened for us to get our teeth into it. Um, alongside me also, Kiva O'Neill. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Liverpool are doing well, aren't they? They're doing all right. Yeah, I think that, that Luton game kind of brought them back down to earth, which I think they probably needed ahead of what's to come, and that's Man City. Luton can do that, though. That can bring you right down to earth. Um, Jay Harris, you are also here. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting a little bit, actually. I was playing football last night, and I jarred my heel. And I've got these weird bruises that have shot up the outsides of my ankles. And with a history of ankle issues, so, I'm So worried. can I just check? Mm. So you were in Lisbon yesterday and you got back in time to play football. Yeah. I respect that commitment. I got, no, That's I a green back. flag in, in my eyes. Oh, thank you. No worries. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. Uncle Adam has done well. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, let's start our show at the top of the table. So it all looks rather familiar at the top of the Premier League. Guess who are top? It is Manchester City. They have 28 points. They've won nine of their 12 games, one draw, two defeats. And maybe, maybe there are a few, a few cracks, but it's not affecting their overall performance. But it is very tight behind them. Liverpool are just one point back with 27, the same. Uh, as Arsenal on 27 points and then Spurs are two points back on 26 and then you've got Aston Villa on 25. Three points separating the top five. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in, in previous seasons when um, City have had sort of proper challenges, there's only really been one every season. It was Liverpool for a few seasons and it was Arsenal last season. So it would be terrific fun if there were sort of two, three, four of them snapping up their heels, even though I, I, I think City will eventually win it. But um Yeah, is that nailed on? Let's get let's get stuck into this. You know, they're top now. Sometimes they might have had sort of a little <coughs> bit of uh warming up into the season, but they're top now and it's it just feels like okay, they're just gonna kick in or they're gonna go through the gears, let's say. Yeah, I mean it's I I'd love to be more optimistic that someone else is gonna win it. But um yeah they they had they've obviously had a couple of wobbles, lost to Wolves, lost to Arsenal, but they usually sort of lose a slightly odd game in most seasons, and then when February comes round, they just kind of, you know, kick into God mode and they mm. don't barely lose any any other games. And the other thing is that they they're top of the table and they haven't got their best player. I haven't had their best player for all but about twenty minutes of the season. Yeah. So De Bruyne is, I think De Bruyne is probably going to be back soonish. Um, and then it will be over. Well, <laughs> well, quite possibly. I mean, I don't want to kind of step on the rest of the the pod here. I mean, we we could just finish it here and and all go home. But um, yeah, I, I suspect it's just that like Jack Grealish was one of their better players last season. He's just been basically been just sort of casually replaced by someone who is has played a bit better than him, which is quite demoralising for. Um, for everyone else, I, I just Jeremy think Jeremy you're talking about. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I just think that while I'm happy to be kind of you know persuaded otherwise, the other people who the other teams who could challenge them have sort of got weaknesses that City haven't. Um, and yeah, it just it does feel quite inevitable. Okay. Well, that's great. That's really <laughs> great. That's great. <laughs> but no, I, look, it, it is tight. And we do have that next game after the international break, um, Manchester City against Liverpool. So Nick has made the, the case for Manchester City. Kiva, it's over to you to make the case for Liverpool. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp's going to be pissed off about the fact that it's another 12.30 kickoff off the back <laughs> of an international break, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, blah. But you got the monkey off the back in the previous game after an international break, one against Wolves. Is that right? 
If my memory serves me correctly. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Good. That, that rings right? a bell, yeah. I think, I think that's so right. So many games. But this game is important. There is only one point in it. And if Liverpool could go to the Etihad and win, it would strengthen the case for Liverpool to win the title. Are you, are you on that page? Are you thinking, actually, this is going to be our season to get back in there? Yeah, I think I've had the Man City game circled for a long time when Liverpool started the season as well as they did because it just always feels like that is the defining fixture and has been when Liverpool and City have battled for titles in the past. I think if you beat City and Liverpool would then go ahead of them, I think that just sends out that little shockwave and I think Liverpool fans would then truly believe, OK, well, they beat City, they're the best team in the league. Now, what can they go and do? But there's still like a little bit of jeopardy here and there with Liverpool. Um, I think the Luton game, which I've earlier mentioned, um, just sticks out a little bit that things can go wrong, and albeit for the late Luis Diaz goal, there are moments still in this team that sort of like feel a little bit like last season when things just went wrong, and you don't know when that's sort of going to open again, like, you know, like a jack in the box almost and jump out. Um, but this game's key and I don't think Liverpool actually have to win it I think a draw is good enough but I also think defeat and Liverpool a Liverpool performance similar to the one against Tottenham they lost that game but everyone I know supports Liverpool was like right these can go all the way this season because I think sometimes a performance can kind of give you that even if a result doesn't Jay in third place Arsenal they're your team, <laughs> as we all know. You're an Arsenal fan. You cover Brentford. Every week. You're just going to do this every time I'm on from, Yeah, of course. Well, you, you're, okay. proud, you're proud. I've got proud, to own it. Proud Arsenal fan. Exactly. I mean, yeah, if you weren't walking around in a big Arsenal T-shirt, as you are now, yeah, then, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. you could help yourself. With Invincibles. Bit. Exactly. Emblazoned on exactly. The front. And that, that red bobble hat that you've got on today. <laughs> um, in terms of how they have done so far and what you could see them achieving this season could they go one better or is this start of the season may, maybe made you think oh no I, it's, it's again we're not going to be able to challenge City um, I think there's been some positive signs um, one of them definitely being Declan Rice the way he's just kind of settled into that um, team straight away has been magnificent I remember chatting to somebody a couple of weeks ago a good friend of mine who's basically saying you know wouldn't be surprised if Declan Rice ends up becoming Arsenal's captain. He's just got that those leadership qualities and just seems to be leading from the front with his performances on the pitch as well. Obviously, the Chelsea game stands out with that goal. He kind of just dragged Arsenal to a point from out of nowhere. They were dreadful for the vast majority of that game. I think the problem with Arsenal at the moment is that they obviously spent a lot of money on Kai Havertz in the summer and he's still adjusting. He's not done anything dreadful. He's not done anything magnificent. He's just OK at the moment. Um, I think Arteta's still trying to work out what his best defence is in terms of some games we see Zinchenko start there. He's obviously very good on the ball, but maybe a little bit less or more limited defensively. Sometimes you see Tomiyasu start there, who's great defensively, but more limited going forward. Obviously, Jesus being injured. I think the, the criticism of Eddie Nketiah is that he can score a hat-trick against Sheffield United with his eyes closed, but when he comes up against a Newcastle, Man United, Chelsea... Although he has actually scored against both those teams before, they tend to be the games where he struggles a little bit more and that's where you need a, a striker with X-Factor. Um, so I think at the moment, I don't feel like Arsenal will go and win it. I feel like they'll go close, but I still just think they're not quite the complete package yet. Um, and obviously I mentioned Jesus, Thomas Partey's out injured at the moment as well. Um, if Declan Rice suddenly got injured and they were forced to play Jorginho week in, week out, I'd be really worried about how they survived against some sterner tests. I think mentally it takes so much out of you to battle against Man City. And it was, I think, like a lot of Liverpool fans were almost like grateful that everyone could see that through the lens of Arsenal going head to head with them. And we're going to see that again this season. And if we do, you know, whether it is Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham and whoever else who can stay around them for as long as possible, um, it, it just feels inevitable that it will end in pain and joy for Man City as well the next couple of games for Tottenham are interesting because they take on Aston Villa who are in fifth Tottenham in fourth currently and then they play against Manchester City themselves uh, also at the Etihad are we 
ruling out Tottenham from from being title challengers simply by the fact that you know their their craziness has just got the better of them over the last couple <laughs> of games. Yeah, I think it's less the slightly less the craziness, more the the fact that I think people, even though they started the season so brilliantly, people knew that this was going to happen at some point that they you know they would get a couple of key injuries and mm. their squad just kind of isn't good enough to um to sort of sustain that you know Spurs fans won't be kind of wailing into the night because they they <laughs> they're not going to effectively title uh, challenge for the title I mean no one expected this at the the start of the season they were just kind of happy to um I mean, at the start of the season, they just seemed they just seemed happy to have a manager who didn't look like he was doing them a massive favour by being there. Yeah, um, and hating every minute. Yeah, exactly. And hating Think, everyone around him. Thinking that this was all beneath him. Yeah, you know. Um, so, from that respect, you know, they've got they've had this brilliant start to the season, played some brilliant football. They've now had a few injuries, um, and you know, unless they. The you know Van der Ven has some kind of miraculous comeback or something or I think remember was remember only was he is he banned for three I games think or was he three because it he was been three yeah like, violent conduct was yeah it? um so yeah he they'll have that sort of sort of patched up defence for another couple of games I saw uh, a doggy was only suspended for one game but I saw he was he picked up an injury as well so that might be a, an issue obviously Madison's out until the new year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I don't think it's a it's not. It's obviously not a complete disaster that they they're not going to challenge for the title. They would be I, I expect will be delighted with you know fifth or something um, come the end of the season. So yeah, it's not sort of we're not it's not some kind of massive disrespect to Tottenham. I don't think by by ruling them out of challenging for the title. Do you think a, a signing for the likes of Tottenham or Arsenal or even Liverpool, if we if we need something new? To topple Manchester City could could make the difference, Jay. Possibly, I don't know if you're purposely trying to edge me into a should Arsenal sign Ivan Tony question. Which Go on I, then. I feel like you're. It's the you're, Jay Harris so, Venn diagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did say, didn't I, that the the kind of problem with Arsenal have at the moment is that Jesus has picked up a couple of injuries, and he I think he was out for a six, seven, eight games last season as well, but it coincided with the World Cup or he picked it up during the World Cup yeah. so maybe didn't have the, yeah. the impact it could have had. Um, so that's two seasons in a row where you're missing him for a reasonable chunk of the season. We've already addressed that Nketi is maybe not at the, the level to be a starting striker if you want to win the league. So certainly for Arsenal, looking at Ivan Tony, whether they can afford him or not is a different question, would certainly give them an extra boost. Um, but something Kiva said actually made me think maybe the difference in the title race this season and Nick said it as well is the fact that it won't be Liverpool on their own trying to take down Man City it won't be Arsenal on their own um, trying to take down Man City and the fact that that collective pressure that City have to constantly go despite being chased by two or three teams might actually be the thing that kind of rattles them a little bit more because let's say they you know they beat Liverpool next Saturday or whenever it is Arsenal win anyways and they kind of like just keep chasing after them regardless. Maybe, maybe that's going to be the secret. We're sort of clutching at straws though, aren't we, really? You've got, you've got, when, when you're up against Man they don't City, seem to be, they don't seem to be kind of affected to. by pressure, do they? Maybe it's Occasionally the thing... though, I feel like they are. Uh, you know, in the battles with Liverpool over the seasons, I think particularly those games, Pep Guardiola has occasionally just been like on the sidelines, just, you know, going crazy. And you've kind of thought, I think something is affecting them. So I do think it can, but, it's, it takes so much to do that, to really like knock them off the path. Um, it's going to take a lot from either of those teams, really. Uh, the last time they conceded four or, or more was they, when they lost 5-2 to Leicester in oh, wow. September 2020, which I have. You would have thought that, you know, so Man City losing 5-2 to uh, home to Leicester, you would think that that would really stick in your mind. I have absolutely no memory of that game at all. I feel like Cambiasso played in that game is my no, no, it's 2020 20, so it would have been oh 2020 been yeah it would so have been it COVID era it was COVID oh, season sorry. so, so it, remember a lot of people saying after the Chelsea 4 all that City in those moments normally kind of just see out the game but they just kind of allowed it to keep unravelling and keep being erratic like they took the lead what how many times in that game and just never managed to hold on to it they, it's almost like they embraced the madness that Chelsea were trying to create which you don't often see Guardiola do right like for them to go what, 4-3 up in the 86th minute or whatever it was, 
surely you'd think a Guardiola masterclass, they'd just see the game out, but it just kept being bonkers. And is that like the start of the chipping away of their inevitability? Because watching the end of that game, I was like, surely Cole Palmer just like misses this penalty somehow because it's Man City and they're going to just somehow get away with it um, because they've got that mentality and that feeling when you watch them. Does that game then start the chipping away process at this big aura and mystique almost that they have? And it was also a sort of slightly self-destructive moment because there, there was no, absolutely no need for it was Ruben Dias, wasn't it, who conceded the penalty? Yeah. There was absolutely no need for him to kind of plough through whoever it was. Bro, yeah. Well. Bro, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it sort of it feels just feel like we're kind of grasping for something a little bit by yeah, but there are yeah, as you say, those little things can sort of chip away at a, a team's aura. We'll discuss a few of the themes later on in this podcast, but one of those themes I think feels like more crazy games this mm. season so far, and, and that game in particular showed that. Obviously, Tottenham have been involved in quite a few as well. Um, just a quick prediction, literally listing your teams. Um, aside from the top three, who else is going to make it into those final two spaces in the top five? So we have Manchester City, Oof. Liverpool and Arsenal. Tottenham are obviously there in fourth. Aston Villa in fifth. Do we see... I mean, do we go down as far as Chelsea in in tenth to to potentially make it into the top five? The way that they seem Something's to have now clicked with Chelsea, isn't yeah. it? At the minute, it just feels like the tide has turned, and they've kind of realised that whatever it is, Pochettino and Everton seems to just be clicking. But I feel like with them, it could just unclick also in the next yeah. game. It's kind of that. I'm not. Feeling. I'm not completely convinced. I'm not completely convinced because the point was made that. Man City and Tottenham were kind of like the perfect opponents for Chelsea because they needed to run into space behind the high line and play against teams that were going to hold on to the ball a lot. Whereas when they were coming up against Brentford, who just put five players behind the ball, they had no idea what to do. And that's often a criticism of Pochettino's teams. So I don't know who their next game is after the international break off the top of my head, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's against a team in the lower half of the table. You suddenly Newcastle kind of, away. Newcastle away. Well, it's going to be a struggle regardless of that game. But it wouldn't surprise me if... Throughout the rest of the season, Chelsea do kind of step up to the occasion against big six sides. Yeah, because they did that, I think, against Liverpool in the opening game. I thought they were terrific. Yeah. I was like completely shocked by the performances after that. Yeah. So and then they were like, there's a very similar game against Forest. Yeah. They yeah, were awful in that game. I mean, they, they, as I'm sure it was the same with uh, against Brentford, five or six players strung yeah. across the, the edge of the penalty area and they just sort of passed it sideways out of about 30 yards out for about an hour of the game. Um, so yeah I think there's just, just with Chelsea there's still too many young players trying to find their feet and trying to get 11 players to do that all at once certainly more encouraging signs I don't think they're going to finish 10th where they currently are but I don't see them the other teams that are fighting for that top 4 top 5 spots I think are just more cohesive the likes of Manchester United in 6th Newcastle no, in 7th I wouldn't say Man United are cohesive but uh, well, form, no, but they're there. form team yeah, in the Premier there. League last six games they're, they're, they're they grind out wins I was at the last game against Luton and like they, it was so boring like <laughs> there was moments from Bruno Fernandes which were ridiculous some of his touches and that was about it like nothing else happened um, and I was just watching it thinking like they're going to win 1-0 and they did um, and that's kind of their feeling at the minute and they probably will continue to do that and then occasionally sort of mess up and then win 1-0 again that's kind of the vibe I got from them watching them so we're thinking that the teams that we've discussed, Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal, are going to make it into the top five. And just incidentally, we're talking about a top five rather than a top four because it's looking ever more likely that Premier League teams will be represented by five teams in the Champions League next season. It depends on the performance and coefficients and all that word salad. So let's head down to the basement where the cobwebs are, the strugglers are, the darkness lives. Where anything that... You want to sell on the repair shop. Exactly. You need to take it from the bottom three into the repair shop. If you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. There is a link. And you know what? It got it got ignored on the previous episode of uh, this podcast. But there may well be something to do with the repair shop coming back on future episodes. If that makes you come back, you're weird. But... <laughs> 
we'll try anything. Are you going on the repair shop? This no, is, I'm not going your... to. What, to try and repair me because I'm broken? Well, I, I mean, I, I was thinking more of a family heirloom, but if you want to think, yeah. you know, your, your body <laughs> and spirit, then that, that, uh, that might be a bit of a challenge for them. If I, I come back on next week's show re-upholstered with leather on, yeah. my, uh, on my upper body, then <laughs> that, would be quite, <laughs> that would be quite fun. Replacing your injured heel. Yeah, with exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what, with a little, like a little, like one of the little wheels that, that you yeah. put on the bottom. Yeah, that like a, an injured handy. dog. Yeah, that would be mm. quite handy. <laughs> or an injured cat like you have yeah. right now with a cone and a poodle's tail. Poor lad. <laughs> yeah. You have to go back to 1998 for the last time all three promoted teams were relegated back to the second tier. Little quiz. Can anyone name those three teams that came up and got flushed straight back down the Premier League toilet? So, which we, 97, 98? Yeah, it, uh, it went down. Yeah. Barnsley were one of them. Yes, think, correct. Ping! Uh, I was four, so I've absolutely... I was <laughs> four. No I was, recollection of two, I think we, three. We were yeah, the only two, ones three. who were, we were sort of conscious. Yo, I know the, the answer, so it's just me and you. Oh God! Come on, Nick, bring it home. Um, Middlesbrough? No, no, no Middles, no, because Middlesbrough were in the second division that season. Second division. Let's see. Yeah. I'm showing the how old, showing the, the second division before the. It doesn't matter. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, okay, okay, not Ipswich. No. This is, are you going to just? Have you got any idea? I'm kind of going around the country in my head and trying to figure it out. But cool. Okay, we'll just keep us posted. <laughs> Talk uh, amongst Crystal yourselves, Palace? Keeper. Crystal Palace, correct. Yep. Ting! That's two out of three. Uh, just as you're about to mug him off and yeah, get him to exactly. speed yeah. up That's, as well. Yeah, it's... I'm going to... Uh, no, not Sunderland either. They were in the... We're going to have to push you for an answer here. Yeah, yeah very good. Okay, can, good. You, can you give me a clue? Uh, rhymes with Holton. Uh, Aston Villa. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it Bolton Wanderers? Correct. Yeah. Ting! Well done. That's three out of three, Nick. Well done. Thanks, mate. Um, really good. Kiva, you co-authored a piece on The Athletic this week asking if promotion has been worth it for the fans of these clubs. What conclusions did you come to? For Luton fans, absolutely, yes. Ah, Luton. It's, Luton. it's all Luton. The bloody fairy tale of Luton Town. covered them for like eight Town. games or something, so, you know, I'm yeah. going to talk about them. Go on, then. Um, their are they fans your are second just... club? Yeah, oh, pretty much now. Don't let your Watford bitterness spill through into <laughs> no, this. Exactly. You're not sensing anything. I mean, no, no, not no. at all. No, it is tram, yeah, still. Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. Um, but anyway, so uh, the fans are just absolutely riding the waves. They're like, they're enjoying like speaking to them outside Old Trafford. It was like they kind of knew that they were going in probably to lose, and I feel like they'll go into a lot of games with that feeling this season. But like the unbridled joy to do that is something to behold. Mm. You know, like it is an old like school it, adventure story, isn't it? This yeah, one? definitely. And the setting up then to sort of um, like challenge to come back if they do go down. You know, they haven't spent a lot of money. They haven't just started. You know, trying like ridiculous things to stay. Like they're sort of like I get the feeling like it's okay if they go back down because they're like they feel in a better place than ever to then challenge to get promoted again. Um, I think the feeling with having watched a bit of Bournemouth as well, I just feel like if they can get on a run, and obviously they beat Newcastle recently, I think um, things are just starting to click for them a little bit. And I think if they open up like six points, nine points, then I just see the bottom three completely marooned and struggling, other than the games against each other, to maybe escape um, is the feeling I get. But... There's hope that, like, it's just going to get, like, you know, someone's going to make a run for it and then someone else will and then it'll just be this really fun relegation battle. If a relegation battle can be fun, I don't think if you <laughs> can support a team in one of those, it's, it is. But can confirm it's not a laugh. No. No. I mean, the neutrals will enjoy it, sort of. I feel like you look at the top of the table and you look at the bottom and then you kind of... The middle's just kind of there, isn't it? There's no fun in the middle. Is it unfair for us to just be calling this this relegation fight now that it is going to be the three promoted teams? Jay or Nick? Um, I was just going to say on Bournemouth that um, they statistically had the hardest start in the league. So I don't think it's really a surprise that they've kind of had to try and adjust to a new manager in quite difficult circumstances. And now they've got two wins in their last three. Um, and I also thought in some of their other performances at the beginning of the season that they were pretty good. Like I'm a big fan of Dominic Solanke. I think he's now scored as many goals this season as he's ever managed in the Premier League before. Um, and I'm a fan of Iriola and what he's trying to do there. So I always felt like 
if he was given enough time that things would turn a corner and it has done. In terms of is it fair for us to kind of write this off already? One, as Kiva's alluded to, the finances that Luton are working with is just minuscule compared to the other teams in the Premier League, even compared to other teams in the bottom half of the Premier League. Um, it's really an uphill battle for them to stay here. With Sheffield United, they sold two of their best players, um, Ilman and Jaya to, I think he went to Marseille in the summer, mm-hmm. Sanderberg went to Burnley. So straight away, you're telling Paul Heckenbottom, <laughs> good good luck, mate, you're not getting any shiny trinkets. He, they've done the opposite of, uh, of Nottingham Forest. And then Burnley, I've said it a couple of times now, but obviously full credit because they went on this grand cultural revolution under Vincent Company and it worked really well in the um, in the championship last year but they just look incredibly naive when you watch them um, I keep waiting for them to like do something and, and have they done anything yet that's like really sort yeah. of no they've lost 10 out of 12 I, f- I feel like won one and drawn one and that's that's it I feel like maybe on Company's the pedigree of his playing career everybody's been a bit like ah Company will be fine you know He'll find some sort of magic formula and it just looks so silly. Like that goal they conceded against Bournemouth where Billing chips Trafford. It's just like, it's just the worst possible goal you could concede when you're in that position because you're trying to emphasise playing out from the back and, you know, being quite fancy in possession. And you just, your goalkeeper gets lobbed because he's too high off his line. It must be quite like a, a kick in the teeth. Um, and I remember when they lost to, to Brentford. So this was before they lost to... Um, uh, Bournemouth and had the other results that they had company was like this is a tough moment but I believe we'll you know this is where you find the most about yourselves and I just thought if that's not a manager kind of in the last chance saloon um, you know kind of smelling of desperation a little bit then I don't know what is um, it just feels like they're trying to be too clever they're also going to be uh, Lyle Foster's probably been their best player this season and he's of course out for you know we don't know yeah. how long for mm-hmm. so yeah, there's not a not a huge amount of optimism for them to do anything else there. For the neutral, looking at the the relegation scrap, we're hoping that one of the low hanging fruit uh, <laughs> continue to be low hanging fruit, and that fruit starts to rot and to smell <laughs> and to drop and to fall away. So we're looking for the likes. So I mean, we've we've discussed Bournemouth, and they seem to be in a good moment. We all say that now, don't we? A good moment, isn't that ridiculous? It's a good moment. Um, but the others, Fulham. Nottingham Forest, Nick. Mm. What's happening at Nottingham Forest? For people who don't know, because it's sort of in that mid-table mediocrity area, 13 points, so they're seven points above the drop zone, but they're not really moving with any sort of purpose at the moment. Is that fair? Uh, Yeah, it probably is. I mean, it's a little bit, you know, one step forward, one and a half back, possibly. Um, Beat Aston Villa at home, then kind of lost quite avoidably to West Ham um, I think I, I mean uh, th- there are uh, th- uh, there's a lot of people possibly because the, the bottom three are kind of so cut adrift this does seem to be a well yeah Forest will be fine vibe which I don't, which is not sort of f- fair I don't think that the, they could quite easily get sucked in but uh, the, the home form is so good that I think they'll probably pick up enough points this is going to be a season where probably you, you might get away with getting like early, fifteen points. Well, po- yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you might get away with getting more realistically like thirty-two yeah. points, something like that. I could see like thirty-four or something like that being and enough. Forest could easily. I don't like, think you're going to need that many. Well, I don't want to be completely disrespectful. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's yeah. just, you know, you you might be able to survive with a very very low yeah. points total. Yeah. So, and you know the the the. Uh, think everyone kind of knows that the the Steve Cooper's well there is the the very strong possibility that Steve Cooper will get sacked at some point um he's a bit like Charlie Brown isn't he there's that there's that cloud with the rain and yeah. it seems to follow him around is yeah it, it was a cl- do, I'm looking you do, do you know when what I'm you said about? the cloud I just about remembered but at first I was a bit it like, is it was a yeah, cloud yeah, yeah. with rain wasn't it or was it just dust because he was a little bit sort of scruffy no I think it's it was cl- cause cloud it was because it was you know so I think it was a, a way of symbolising his mood. Obviously, with Cooper, there is that, that that doubt. Marco Silva signed a new contract at Fulham, and currently they are looking a little bit precarious. They're just above uh, Bournemouth in 16th. Everton seem to be heading in the right direction. 
Roy Hodgson doesn't seem like at any point he's going to get relegated from the Premier League. And then above that, you've got Wolves, Brentford, etc., etc. And they are then sort of, they look to be clear. So we're just hoping that one of the low-hanging fruit have a bit of crisis. And to be brutally honest, we're hoping it's... It's Forrest just to see what happens to you. We, sh- we should say with... Uh, We're not, I love Forrest. I love Forrest. I went to university in Nottingham and I love Forrest and I, I think they're a great club mm. and all that sort of history. Try so, to turn that No, 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 I do. <laughs> I do. I'm just doing it because you're here. But let's make sure this podcast doesn't drag on and on. Our standout players and our moments of the season are next. Right, I want to open this up to the floor. This is the sort of the, the free period. If you were at school, this would be the sort of the, the time when you could, I don't know, chat with your mates and, and stuff Temple like Rum. that. Play Temple Rum? Run. What's Temple Run? You don't remember Temple Run on iPhone back in the day? <laughs> okay, no, hang on a minute. Right, right, hang on a minute. Do, do, do you remember it? Ha- hold on a minute, Sonny Jim, right? <laughs> do, r- do I remember it on iPhone? When I was at primary school, there wasn't even mobile phones, okay? So... Yeah, but it was... Like Chill your 10 boots. years ago so you, you had an iphone 10 years ago didn't you yeah 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 i did but i wasn't yeah. at school 10 years ago it was recently my birthday everyone happy birthday happy birthday thank you well done happy birthday sorry i thought that Cheers. was going to be really rude <laughs> yeah. that was almost, it was very childish of me to raise my birthday and want a happy birthday so maybe <laughs> here comes the, I, the cake i'm still young at heart so let's get stuck into some of the the themes of the season so far and one for me has been the i don't know the, the extra sort of elements that we've seen with VAR in particular obviously we've had wrong decisions but being able to hear what's happening in the VAR room ha- has that been uh, an enjoyable peek behind the curtain for you Nick? Uh, no um, I mean I suppose it's enjoyable in as much as we got the one of the great catchphrases of the season great process lads or whatever it was yeah well done boys where well, well done yeah, that's right yeah well, great process <laughs> Um, For people who aren't familiar with what that is, explain. It was from the uh, Tottenham-Liverpool game yeah. when uh, the Luis Diaz goal was incorrectly uh, ruled offside because there was a, a huge mess in the uh, the VAR booth. Um, which Baron was, England didn't have a good day, did he? You, uh, and, um, yeah, th- they initially said, yeah, well done, lads, great process, we've sorted that out, and then until a kind of lowly underling said, yeah, no, you haven't. Yeah, um, but it was too late. But it was too late. Apparently it was too late. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th- th- there just seems to be a, a, been a huge, like, I don't know, increase in... Everything is now... Every, every decision that you kind of faintly disagree with and managers have been not singling anyone out particularly because a few of them have done it uh, any decision that you kind of slightly disagree with now has now become a great scandal has now become yeah. how dare you know this is this is a yet another uh, tragedy that has been put upon us well let's not beat around the bush Mikel Arteta well Mikel Arteta is the, the the kind of biggest one and there is a lot of t- it wasn't Pochettino so much but there was a lot of stuff about um, the uh, first penalty again in the Chelsea City game when it was Erling Haaland and Cucurella. Loads of people were just saying I can't, this is, you know, this is yet another catastrophic failure. A, you could have given that as a penalty, you could have given it as not but now because this sort of level of outrage has, has increased so much, everyone is disgusted with every decision that has slightly gone against them. A word on Arteta from an Arsenal fan, Jay. <laughs> the fact that obviously he went he went in both barrels, two foot. He went in yep. all guns blazing after the the defeat against Newcastle, disgrace, all that malarkey, travesty, da 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 da. And then he tried to play all funny and humorous when they beat Burnley and he wanted that question asked of him about is VAR, you know, how did VAR do? What, what did you make of that as an Arsenal fan? Because it just it made me just sort of go, come on, you can't do both things. You can't be all sunshine and happy yeah. now, well, having I, gone having gone in on the officials that previous. When the Liverpool and Tottenham situation, I'm pretty sure he hadn't sort of he'd been asked about that, and a few other managers, and they were just kind of like just part of the game energy. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Just deal with it, lads. Kind of. Thing. And then it happens yeah. to certain the teams. Two, the two the two clubs, the two clubs, all the clubs are too selfish. Yeah. to come together and kind of like back each other's interests when there's a bad decision made against each other. It's only when it happens to their team that they're willing to kind of stand up and, and moan about it. And um, it's not a new thing, is I it? Didn't, it's no, not a new I, thing. Did, I didn't think it was particularly clever with, with Mikel Arteta. And look, people will debate 
and I've had this debate with people in the office about the push for weeks now. I personally think it's a quite a soft foul for Arteta to want that goal to be disallowed. I just think Gabriel has to do better in that moment. And I'd also criticise Arsenal for not playing on and Joe Willock being the only player on the pitch who continued and gambled on whether the ball had stayed in or not. Mm-hmm. Arteta just talking about the officiating being disgraced was a was an absolute smokescreen. And what I was going to say in terms of VAR was that the whole point of it was to was to uh, correct clear and obvious errors. But as Nick said, it's not used to just analyse anything that's remotely marginal, whether it's a handball in slow motion, whether it's a tackle in slow motion. I've kind of moved away from the point of what VAR was introduced for. But on the other hand, be careful what you wish for because Chelsea played Real Madrid in the Women's Champions League last night. There's no VAR, and there were two horrendous decisions which have prevented Chelsea from beating Real Madrid. So one of them is Fleming Fowles, a Real Madrid player, outside of the box. The referee gives it as a penalty. Real Madrid equalised. And then Neve Charles equalises in like the 95th minute of the game. And it's dis- I don't know if it's disallowed for an offside or what, but it's the wrong decision. And Chelsea have been robbed. So there's no VAR there. So you're getting some people saying, let's go back to these magical days before VAR when we didn't argue that much. It was like we were arguing just as, as yeah. much before then. Are there any other trends that, that stick out, Nick? I don't know if it's a, a, a trend so much, but it, it seems like there's been quite a lot of chaos yes. in games. We've got, uh, I don't know, we're going to come to the game of the season. Um, ben, you can uh, talk about chaos, that's fine. But yeah, but like, you know, we've had an 8 0 and we've had a 4 4 and we've had. While you know four one doesn't look that crazy on the the face of things, that Chelsea Spurs game was one of the madder matches that I'm sure we've all watched. So I don't know. I I haven't got any kind of grand theory to explain it all. Um, In particular, it's been a crazy couple of weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, maybe maybe there is a sort of element of recency bias. But the the but like you know Tottenham scored goals in the sort of ninety fifth and the ninety ninth minute or whatever it was against Sheffield United and Arsenal. Arsenal went 2-1 down against Manchester United and somehow ended up winning 3-1. Um, so, you know, the, 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 it, it feels like that um, maybe it's because some managers aren't quite so so sort of keen on controlling the, every moment of the game. Who knows what it is really. But yeah, there does seem to be have, have been a, a lot more chaotic moments in this season. Jay? I've realised I've got two. Oh, I'm go on be, then. I'm going to be greedy. Can I have one? <laughs> no, go on, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is injuries seem to be bad at every club this year. Again, I don't have a grand theory for that. Maybe it's easy to say, well, it's the after effect of having a World Cup in the middle of the season last year that's finally coming home to roost, if you want to put it that way. Um, and then the other one was... Man United always seem to be one result away from perpetual crisis at the moment. Mm. Um, I think Kiva mentioned earlier, I think they've actually won four of their last five, but it really doesn't feel that way. It just feels like they are stuck in the mud at the moment. Well, they haven't drawn any games, so it's really on a knife edge. Well, there you go. And, um, you know, we're coming on to moments of the season in a minute. I hate to say it as someone who covers Brentford, but when Brentford lost to Man United, that was absolutely bonkers they just seem to somehow be very close to some sort of full-blown calamity and then somehow just pull it back for one week two week three weeks and then the cycle goes again so i was reading an article put together by the the good people at opta um and obviously you know we do a lot of good work with with opta with our data and and stuff like that and our articles but it was really interesting and i wanted to do um a very very quick fire roundup of the 20 teams that sounds like maybe an impossible thing but I wanted you to pick for the 20 teams the most indispensable player within those teams so far this season. And it's backed up by Opta data. I'm not going to be able to go into all of the data so, details. So can I ask? Yes. It's a case like if you took that player's goals and assists and but contributions maybe even, out. But yes, exactly. Overall contributions. It's backed by data. So stuff okay. like true tackles. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right, so I will say the team. You have to say the most indispensable player so far. Here we go. Arsenal. Rice. No. Uh, Martinelli. No. Saka. Saka. No. Martin Odegaard. Huh? You're zero. Okay. Zero so far. Aston Villa. Uh, Watkins. No. Douglas Luiz. No. Diaby. No. John McGinn. Oh, God Bournemouth. Bit Solanke. 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 Yeah. Correct. We've got our first one. Brentford. 
Matthias Jensen. No. And Brian and Boomer. Yes, correct. Uh, Brighton. Matoma. Correct. Matoma. Uh, Burnley. We spoke about him and they're going to miss him. Life Foster. Exactly. Chelsea. Cole Palmer. No. Sterling. No. Thiago Silva. Correct. Yes. Crystal Palace. Back in the team. Eze. Correct. Uh, Everton. Uh, Decore. No. Branthwaite. No. Uh, Calvert Lewin. No. McNeil. No. Anana. No. <laughs> Pickford. No. <laughs> Kivas, oh, I'm not playing. Keep us happily sitting yeah. this out. Uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin. But I, not, said, I said that. Oh, did you? Didn't I? I don't know. But I, I said it like he's only played like I said it in my head. Do you want to know the reason? Yeah. Well, it is because they've won four of the nine Premier League games this season that he's played in and they had won none of the three that he has missed. Okay. So there you have it. Right, let's quickly move on. Fulham. Leno. No. Palina. 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 Correct. Liverpool. Kiva. Mohamed Salah. Thank you. Uh, Luton. Think. Thomas Kaminsky. Correct. He's Oof. been in great form. Manchester City. Missed him for a little bit. Rodri. Correct. Manchester United. You mentioned him earlier, Kiva. Fernandez. Yes, correct. Newcastle. Trippier. Yeah, Anthony Trippier. Gordon. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, and he was having that beef with the fans the other day. Yeah. Got to watch out. There's always going to be a mobile phone around. Uh, Nottingham Forest. Probably Awoni. No. 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 Oh, interesting. Uh, Mangala. No. There's that little flick with that goal earlier on oh, in the season. Gibbs White. Yeah, correct. Uh, Sheffield United. Tough one. Mm, bloody hell. Correct. Oh, Very nice. good. Tottenham. Okay. Not going to be there for a while. Madison. Exactly. West Ham. Bowen. Bowen. Must be Bowen. And Wolves. Neto. Pedro Neto. And who has the most assists this season in the Premier League? Pedro Neto. I'm Pedro guessing. Neto with seven. Wow. Good, eh? So there you go. We've wrapped that up all in a minute. Fantastic. Right. Let's get the uh, signings of the season so far. Um, here are a few. It feels like James Madison was, and now they're gonna. They're really gonna struggle without him, Tottenham. Yeah, I think. I mean, the, the, there's no point in uh, over uh, complicating this. I think it is Madison. There are a few others. Declan Rice, Moussa Diaby has been very exciting to watch. Um, Vicario would be my my other shout. Um, he. I, I don't know whether it's a sort of surprise thing, given that I didn't really know a huge amount about him before he joined, but he's. He's been superb uh, for Tottenham. So, yeah. Any other nominations for signing of the season? Um, I was just going to say Madison and Rice. So, uh, I'm Any stuck Liverpool now. players in particular? I, th- I feel like Dominic Sobersly has been definitely a signing of the season, but recently that's dipped just a little bit. Oh, have you gone but off him a little bit? No, ju- I just feel like there's been moments when. You still feel like there's a little bit of work to do. He's he's magnificent. Some of the yeah. passes he plays, but I think particularly when he runs with the ball into his own box, sometimes he he's lost it a couple of times. Um, recently, I think against Bournemouth and Luton, and that was just a little standout for me. He's magnificent, as I've said, and in a few months we could be like talking about him in the same way we was not long ago. Definitely, Jay. You just tapped your temple at yeah. me. Uh, kudos. I still think there's a lot more to come from him, but in the you know the limited amount of game time he's had so far, yeah. See, I think I've excited Nick here, but I mean <laughs> the acrobatic goal against um, Brentford. I think there was a, another nice volley from outside the box in another game. Just a very very exciting player. So I think once he's fully unleashed by Moyes, he'll be in the conversation. Okay, I've got another. Sorry, just another one has occurred to me. He's only played six games, but Murillo at Forest is, has is the real thing. He's he's proper good. He um, had a, he had that dribbly goal, didn't he? A dribbly, oh, no, dribbly chance, dribbly nearly goal against Crystal Palace. Yes, he ran through the entire team and just ended up shooting with his wrong foot straight at the goalkeeper. No one's mentioned Jeremy Jeremy Doku, by the way. You kind of you, you almost forget because he, he sort of it's that anti Manchester City bias. Oh, they can yeah. sign who they want, but, but they but they it's clever signing. They just sort of absorb these brilliant players into this. Big massive brilliance that I feel like you almost and he almost looks more brilliant than he ever looked before. Yeah. yeah. Does that just put you put the shirt on and Pep Guardiola's your new mate and you just 
I suppose, I suppose the one thing is together. one thing is that he has there's always this thing about it takes a year to adapt to, to Guardiola and Grealish being the most sort of prominent example re- recent example of that but he it seems like they've just kind of he just went in the table. What was that game when he got like 18 assists and it was just like oh it was two weeks Doku, ago. Yeah. It was Bournemouth wasn't it the Bournemouth yeah, one yeah. yeah which was six one in the end mm, is that right I can't remember I, think I think like Kim said so, yeah. been a it's lot also of games. really hard for City players even new signings to almost stand out yeah. because of Erling Haaland and Co ok fine so we're giving it to James Madison so far yeah. are we yeah. yeah ok right uh, quick shouts for games of the season I'll give you uh, one each Jay you can go first I have to do Tottenham Chelsea it was just too funny it's yeah. too chaotic it's one of the best things I've ever seen I like, just couldn't <laughs> couldn't stop laughing at the end like I actually wanted that dire goal to stand just for the pure yeah. chaos of it all. Um, so yeah, I picked that one. Kiva? I think I've missed all the best games. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because you've so been hanging around Kenilworth Road just watching all Luton. Yeah. Um, although their draw with Liverpool was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was. It was a good game. I feel I missed. I caught the end of the Chelsea Man City game like the last fifteen minutes. So I feel like you know when you watch the last fifteen minutes, so you feel a little bit a part of a part of it, but not fully. I missed the Tottenham Chelsea game. And I've missed like all of the other. I missed the Liverpool Tottenham game actually as well. I feel like I've missed the most exciting games this season. So I don't know what to say. Right. What are you going to say? Sort of like Luton won, <laughs> Wolves won. I've, or no, because actually I've not watched Luton win did. either. <laughs> Luton have won this season at Goodison Park against Everton, but I was not there for it. Okay. Well, we'll move on then. Nick. Uh, you s- told us we we're only allowed one, but uh, I'm going to annoy you. I'm going to take two. Oh, um, okay. And the. the, the they're both not necessarily just for the whole game, but for the way they ended. We mentioned the mentioned it earlier. Arsenal, Manchester United. Ah, yes. Where United thought they were gone two True, gone two one ahead. Yeah. Lots of kind of aerial shots of fans streaming out and going yes. to the and then looking very confused about twenty minutes later when they check the phone to see that Arsenal actually won three yeah. one. I and also missed that game. Yeah. Uh, honestly. What are you doing on the weekend? <laughs> Literally going to watch Luton. <laughs> <laughs> The other one um, was Newcastle won Liverpool two, which seems like it was about three years ago, but it was oh, around yes. the start of the season. Nunez, Nunez, yeah. Nunez, just when we thought Nunez would hit some form, and then he just is erratic again. Sorry, I but did true. see that game. Yeah, I did. But that yeah. was a great turnaround, wasn't it? It was superb. The Liverpool ten men for it was about seventy minutes of the game or something like that. Where Van Dijk was sent off quite early on. Yeah, and then popping up with those two brilliant goals at the end. Goals of the season now. There are many contenders. Um, there's, Jay- one on, there's one on this list that I'd forgotten about, which it probably should be, which is John Duran versus Crystal Palace. Oh. Because that was foul. He hit that violently. That was, <laughs> it was. He that chested was, it down and then yeah. assaulted the ball. Yeah, into the yeah, back yeah of exactly. Yeah. Um, I'll give credit to Sam Angodos. He scored a very nice volley from the edge of the box for Brentford a couple of weeks ago in the torrential rain. So chests it volleys it so I feel like just being able to do that when there's all sorts of rain wind blowing in your face was was pretty classy what as well what about your man Sharda I think it's okay. I mean it's a good goal who's a smooth operator in that goal yeah Come I think on. the Godos one is better the only one of it. oh yeah, yeah I, I'm with you now I'm with you now I'm with you now, with you now. Yeah. You know, old, was man, a... old man Nick got that one <laughs> Two blank faces yeah. opposite. No, that 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 was good. That was good as well. But yeah. I think God, I think Goddesses was better personally. Okay, fair enough. Kiva, sob a slight against Villa. I don't think I'll see a ball this season yes. struck quite as sweetly as that. That was just. I don't think I've seen a ball hit that well at Anfield since. If you remember the mad Thiago goal against Porto in the Champions yeah. League. Oh, the one that sort of skipped. It, yeah. like we it still skipped don't off know to this day yeah. if that touched the floor or not yeah. on the way in. It was like a glitch. Wasn't yeah, it? so that that's the best goal at Anfield since then. Yeah, okay, that's a great shout, Nick. Uh, possible recency bias, but Sir Chris Ab- Wood, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> some some sensational glancing headers. Yeah, <laughs> um, no, Sarabia's goal against Tottenham oh, this this yes. recent weekend because it you, you I mean I, I enjoy a, a sort of thrashed finish from outside the the area as much as anyone, but you goals that you don't. The type of goals that you don't see very yeah. often, that uh, the ones that kind of stick in your mind, and and also it is a sort of niche category of previously relatively terrible players um, scoring brilliant goals because uh, well, he is, as far as I can tell, Wolves fans' least favourite player because yeah. he's just been 
awful since he he joined them with with a sort of relatively lofty reputation. But yeah, that that goal was sensational. It was a, it was a lovely lovely control and then finish. It was wonderful. Mm. Right, quick shouts for your moment of the season. I, again, I'm going to annoy you and have two. One I mentioned earlier. It's my moment of the season for the wrong reasons, but that. Man United come back against Brentford. I mean, I think they scored their first goal in the 93rd minute and 13 seconds and they somehow won 2-1. Yeah. I couldn't speak for 10 the minutes. The McTominay after. show. I was honestly just, I, I don't know what I've just witnessed. Um, and then Rice's goal in that game, as you have exposed me for being an Arsenal fan, I did certainly enjoy enjoy that goal. OK, Kiva, moment of the season? Was it traipsing up some raw iron steps looking into someone's <laughs> garden at Kenilworth Road? Or? Yeah, it actually yeah. was. Maybe yeah. yours was, I thought yours was going to be meeting that dog. Uh, uh, yeah, it kind of be Jeffrey, meeting Jeffrey. Jeffrey the, the dog. dog. For people who aren't aware who Jeffrey the dog is. Jeffrey is a guy, dog, who has basically a season ticket at Kenilworth Road with his owner, Matt, who I was fortunate enough to meet and went to the pub with them for a pint after the game and, yeah, got to tell their story to the world and that was just the best thing ever. So, I mean, I've missed some games this season but I've had some really lovely moments like that and also I'm just, like, never going to ever do anything as sweet and as beautiful as that story, to be honest. So, it's all downhill from here. Wholesome stuff. Nick? Uh, well, I'll follow that up by saying the, the VAR thing, the... the uh, <laughs> Well done, boys. Good process thing. You'll go from the sub- sublime to the ridiculous. Yeah, it's to the yeah. to the wholesome to um, to one of the most absurd moments of the season. So yeah, I'll go but with I that. will. I I think that's a good, it's a good shout. But I would also say, in defence of the officials, I think it has actually been fascinating to hear what goes on and also the diligent work that, on the whole, they do do in the the VAR room and I think it's actually been a really positive thing to be able to hear more and hopefully they can then integrate that in to the match experience so we get a little bit more information a bit more clarity and everyone's not just hanging around going what the is going on that would be great um quick shouts on managers to get sacked first I feel like I've been sticking to this uh line for ages but I just feel something is going wrong with company so I say keep an eye on that okay company not Rob Edwards. Of course not Rob Edwards. Sorry, just wanted to talk about Luton again. Um, it does feel like Heckenbottom just because they're there and I don't know. Yeah, but but again, it doesn't feel like it. I feel like, is anyone, there was a few weeks ago when I was like, I think I think every club's kind of okay with the manager and we might, will this be a season where we actually don't see anyone get sacked or lose the job? I don't know. Nick? I'm gonna sort of emotionally hedge here by so, so when it actually does happen, I can seek some sort of solace yeah. in knowing that I was right. But Steve Cooper, okay. I will be, you know, screaming into a pillow. But at least I, I can say I was right on the Athletic Football po- Podcast. And that Cl- will. Clough will come to your um, to your to your comfort though. Yeah, right? just to clarify for the listener, Clough is my cat. <laughs> yes, I'm not yes. like. It's like not the ghost of Brian Clough. Not the Bri- no. ghost of Brian Clough or bizarrely Nigel Clough <laughs> no. uh, coming from Mansfield to comfort no. me. No. But, but no, uh, that would be great. Nigel, if you're listening, uh, when yeah. Steve Cooper does get sacked. Can you come and give me a cuddle? Yeah, I live in South London. A um, coffee cuddle? Yeah. So f- <coughs> free free parking outside uh, our house, so yeah, that's not going to be a problem. Fantastic. Uh, do we want to make any picks for player of the season or is it just far too early? Um, no, that's good fun. I think Madison is, again, probably one of the leading candidates in, in that conversation. Any other randoms that you've got? It feels like it will be Ellen Harland eventually, but then that almost feels boring. And then Sal is just there doing his thing again. And it's almost like, can we overlook them just because they're really good and like give it to someone else? Uh, I mean, Salah is, is my actual choice, but Douglas Louise has been phenomenal mm-hmm. Great shot. at uh, Aston Villa as well. Um, there is one here for surprise package, but I don't really think that anyone's surprised anyone in particular, have they? Um, I would say Everton. I really thought they'd be um, struggling a little bit more. And um, didn't they lose their first three games in the season in a row? Yeah. Um, but they, they never were, go down. Yeah. They were outperforming. They were doing really well on XG, but were just were not scoring goals. Um, and then now, all of a sudden, they seem to have turned it around with your man, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, as you said earlier. They're A-OK. Is Wolves as well. Wolves. Wolves. They have is it not Aston Villa, though? Yeah, prob- it's probably it's is Aston Villa. It's pretty incredible, like, uh, having also. watched them this season. They are so good. Yeah. But I suppose they were they were also pretty good last season, whereas yeah. at the start of the season... But just, Wolves. it really feels like something different. Yeah. It feels 
more exciting and thrilling and like they could actually really challenge for the top four. Mm. Yeah, uh, on the walls at some point we probably do need to start saying Gary O'Neill was a good manager. Yeah. Oh. Feels like he's still <coughs> being very disrespected for what he's done at Bournemouth and, and Wolves. It'd just take a few more PowerPoint presentations on Monday Night Football <laughs> for him to <laughs> persuade us that he's brilliant. Yeah, that was a good moment of the yeah. season so far, wasn't it? Um, okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, Jay, Kiva and Nick. I've enjoyed that. Have you all enjoyed just having a little stop and think? Loved it. Always. Excellent. Kiva? Yeah, it's been nice to not be on the move. Still point in a turning world. Lovely. Um, and on all of these categories that we've discussed, it's well worth you commenting on this episode of the podcast. Drop in your comments. Just say who you think is the player of the season so far, your moment of the season, goal of the season, all that sort of stuff. Drop it in and we will uh, digest them and we will reflect on them next week. If you like this video, click subscribe for more content like this. We'll be joined by the likes of David Ornstein, Matt Slater, Adam Crafton, Carl Lanka, and plenty more through the season to bring you the inside track to the biggest stories in football. If you'd like to listen to the full episodes for free, search the Athletic Football Podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. <laughs>